As a mom and a homemaker, we come into some situations that can cause a lot of stress in our lives. So stay tuned. I'm going to tell you six different ways that you can reduce stress in your home as a mom and a homemaker. Okay, so let's get into this, right? As a mom of six, baby number seven on the way, and homeschooling, um, we've been homeschooling for the last five years. I'm a military wife, or soon to be ex-military wife. Woo! And um, my oldest is 15. So, not to mention those things that are my everyday life, but I was raised in a very uh, chaotic and stressful um, home and upbringing. So, I have a very close relationship with stress and I have learned um, and I have learned some successful ways of keeping stress at bay and managed um, not to mention God has really given me God has really granted me so much growth in this area and I really don't want to get emotional but um, I used to be a very wound up, stressed out, um, overwhelmed woman and mama, especially when I first got married, before I knew the Lord. Um, it was really hard and then I had lost my mom early on in our marriage and with deployments and babies and just all of the changes that happened. Um, you guys, it was rough, and I am so thankful to the Lord that He has truly changed me and has really given me, um, He's really given me so much improvement in this area. The fact that I'm sitting here getting ready to share ways with you guys to be able to reduce stress in your lives is really incredible. Um, and I know you guys don't really know me yet, but just know it is a testimony to God's goodness and his faithfulness that I'm able to sit here and do this. So let me get into this. So some of these items here, most of them I'll say, are scientifically proven to be able to reduce stress. Now. The way I do it, I put a little spin on it, and it definitely has Christian groundings in it. Like, the way that I reduce stress is I turn my eyes to the one who can bring peace and calm into my life. So, if you're not a Christian, these still very much will apply to you, but if you're a Christian, you're definitely going to get the full benefit of these things. So, number one is breathe. Now, there's so much scientific evidence proving that taking deep breaths, nice and slow, like 10 good deep breaths, sometimes you're going to have to step away from whatever situation it may be. You may have to go lay baby down in the crib safely and they may have to cry a little bit. You may have to go ahead and put the TV on for a little bit so the toddler can calm down for a moment or sit them down with some Play-Doh and deal with the mess later. It might have to be a, hey, mama needs a timeout. Just give me like 10 minutes and I will come back to this. But right now, I cannot be the best mom I can be and I have to remove myself. And then you go and do your breaths. And of course, we all know, in through the nose, breathing in, and out through your mouth, okay? And while you're doing this, repeating scripture that you have memorized or that you have, you know, and when I first started doing this, I had index cards or post-its, and I had them all over. And still, if you go through my home, you will see notes, um, post-its, a lot of post-its. Your girl loves post-its. It's, there's always a reason for a post-it. Uh, index cards, or I've even gotten better about, you know, typing it up and making it pretty and putting it like 
wherever but I will have it I have scripture all over the place to remind me and recenter and and take those thoughts captive and realign so that is something that you should be doing um, and if not repeating the scripture or or saying the scripture reminding yourself of the scripture then praying praying that in this moment that you would be able to take this time that you would be self-controlled that you would be able to lay your worries your burdens your stresses at the lord's feet and when you leave them there you gotta leave them there you can't pick them up and it might be something as trivial as you know I'm trying to think of something small that could, I mean, usually if you're stressed out, there's something bigger at hand going on. Um, and it's just the little mundane everyday things that kind of just get at you, right? Like if you're already worried about something, stressed out about something, got something big going on in your head, like finances is a huge one, you had a fight with your spouse, somebody's health is in, you know, going wrong. Sometimes it's just pregnancy hormones get the best of you and you just feel irritable for no reason and just every little thing just kind of picks at it like a scab, right? Um, and so it could just be, you know, breakfast got burnt and then you spilled milk by getting the bottle and now you got to clean that up or there was a pee accident with the training toddler or whatever and just kind of like adds up right and so we have to be careful that we're taking you know we're being self-controlled we're being good examples to our children but sometimes we literally just need to step away remind my ourselves you know remind ourselves to what we're doing why we're doing it who it's for and realize it's okay you know um and so breathe just breathe take your 10 breaths if you still feel stressed out and you still feel like you can't get back out there and handle it take 10 more breaths and then let's move on to number two so number two is music now i noticed recently my daughter was cleaning the kitchen it's her chore um to do the kitchen at night and she was sweeping really rough and she was just like closing cabinets really hard. She was just being more aggressive in the way she was cleaning. And it was really stressing me out and making me just like uncomfortable. And so I was talking to her and she said, nothing's wrong, you know, just trying to make sure, hey, is there something that I need to know? Are you irritated? Are you frustrated? Is there something I can help you with? It was none of those things. And I said, okay, let me see your phone. And sure enough, she's listening to kind of like what would you alternative music which nothing was really bad about it it was just I think feeling I think it was just fueling the way she was cleaning and so I immediately switched it over and I put on worship music I had a little talk with her explaining it I let her know how it was making me feel and you really when you're doing it like that when you're angry cleaning or aggressively cleaning you're really not doing a, gr a great job. Like you're not going to be as efficient and effective if you're doing it that way. One and two, God is concerned with our heart positions and if we're doing things and we're angry or we're frustrated or we're upset, we have to do it. Well, then we're not really doing it to the glory of God. And so we have to realign our thoughts. And so I turn on worship music for her and sure enough, she was cleaning differently. And so oftentimes putting on some feel good music. And again, if you're not a Christian, you don't listen to worship music, then just put on something that is going to soothe you, that is peaceful and calm and is going to help you get into that kind of attitude and mentality, right? Like the, it, it's going to soothe you and it's going to calm you and it's going to help you be at peace that's what you want and so I put on worship music because that's what works for me sometimes though I'll just put on 90s country because it's nostalgic it feels good to listen to it it puts me in a good mood and I love to sing with it right 
or I'll put on some, you know, 90s pop and just dance around and it helps me feel lighter, it helps me be more joyful. Sometimes it turns into a dance party with the kids, but it just makes me feel more lighthearted and I calm down and I find that I'm not as stressed out when I am listening to music that makes me feel good and even if it's just for a little bit, even if it just takes the edge off for a few moments, it's a few moments that I have control over myself and the situation and I show my kids, I, I'm a, an example to my kids that hey, we have control over our emotions, we can affect it and there's things that we can do to realign us to what matters. So. That was number two. Number three is move your body. Exercise. So going for a walk is an excellent way to reduce stress. Being outside, fresh air, the vitamin D from the sun, these all make you feel good, not to mention the endorphins that are released from going on a walk. And why not just get the kids all loaded up? I mean, if you need time and you have the ability like, hey, husband, can you watch the kids or older child, can you just keep an eye on the kids? I'm just gonna go for like a 10, 15, 20 minute walk. Then do that by all means, like if you need to have some time. But I've noticed most of the time the kids barely really talk to me and if they are, they're pointing out all of the goodness that surrounds me. They're showing me flowers or trees or birds or just things that they're noticing, which is great and it helps me focus on other things than what is stressing me out or what is causing these problems. And we have a great time. Sometimes we'll end up at the park and it's just a great way to reduce stress, get those endorphins up, get that fresh air. And if nothing else, it just gets you out of your, that's, sorry. It gets you out of that space of whatever is stressing you out and sometimes just stepping away just gives you a refreshment that you are you take and you breathe and you have a moment and then you can go back in and you can face whatever it was that was the problem in the first place, okay? So then number four, and this is one of my favorite things. This is what has brought more peace into my home than any other thing besides, okay. <laughs> this one thing besides God has brought more peace into my home than anything else and that is get organized whether it is the space around you it is your time your schedule whatever it is get organized because um clutter physical clutter around you makes your brain feel cluttered your time being chaotic and sporadic and not knowing what's going on what's coming next what needs to happen same thing with the kids like if they don't know what's going on they're asking you a hundred times a day what this is gonna you know what are we having to eat what are we gonna do this when are we doing this when is this gonna happen what's next what do I have to do you know they're asking you a hundred questions because they don't know what to expect and then you're trying to just like figure it out as you go and it just causes I mean literally you guys this was the thing that stressed me out the most and my I wasn't raised in a very organized kind of household. Um, I mean, we had our regular things, right? Like school, my mom worked, like, you know, we knew we came home, we did our homework, we did school, or um, we did our homework and we did our home, you know, our housework, but like our chores, but we didn't really have like a schedule of time when we were gonna eat any of those things and so I didn't know when I first started homemaking and I, when I first was a mom and I, I first started keeping a home myself I didn't know to do those things I wasn't trained in it I had to learn thank God there are so many resources and loving people that came alongside me to help teach me and show me these things but it was, it stressed me out so much and I just thought, oh, I'm just like a go with the flow kind of person I don't really need to. And you know, I just do better without schedules with the kids. But my greatest struggles were because I was so disorganized and just so, it was just, there was no order in my home. There was no, I mean, there was, but there wasn't, you know what I mean? So 
Um, one of my biggest things I recommend is get it organized, get a cleaning schedule um, to help know what you need to do because one of the things I've been talking to a couple of people recently and one of the things that I tend to do is all or nothing, right? It all has to get done or I'm not going to do any of it because I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do first. And so it's like all jumbled up in my head and it just is too much. And so it's like, okay, either I have to get all of it cleaned or I have to get all of it organized or I just can't do anything at all. And what I've learned is having a cleaning schedule, knowing, okay, we're going to clean the bathrooms today. And, you know, or, okay, today I'm cleaning my room. So I'm going to declutter and I'm going to organize and I'm going to clean my room. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. Like, that's the main thing. And while, yes, I do kind of tidy up other areas. And, of course, the kids have their responsibilities and chores that they help me with. So it's, you know but I'm in constant rotation in the rooms that I'm focusing on to make sure that I'm doing all of the things that my like OCD-ness sees. Like when I say all or nothing guys, I'm not saying like, okay, hey, like the bed needs to be made, the clothes need to be washed and the the floor needs to be cleaned to vacuum. I mean like the doorknobs need to be cleaned, <laughs> the light switches need to be cleaned, baseboards need to be dusted, doors need to be cleaned, um, d like it has to be all of it. Like if I can't clean a room all the way and I just had to learn a little bit every day is much better than nothing at all. Get done what I can. And of course with six kids, guys, things are going to come up and I'm not going to be able to get to my chore list every day. And that is okay. And God is good and he gives grace. And that is one of those things that I had to learn is I have grace guys. I have grace when I don't get to everything. And guess what? There's always tomorrow. Tomorrow will always bring time to do what I didn't. And so when I fill out, here, let me, oh, so when I fill out my to-do list, if there's something that I didn't get done, I know I'm sure you guys are probably not going to be able to see this, um, but down here, I got almost everything done. I had, I have some stuff to do because we're selling our RV with the title that I just couldn't do. So I'm kind of at a standstill with that. But um, one of the things on the list was make hummus. I didn't get to doing hummus yesterday. Things came up. I got busy, distracted, whatever. And so I put hummus on the list today. Guess what? Still haven't gotten to hummus. <laughs> and while part of me is like, oh, I really need to get that hummus done because it's for a snack. I think actually tomorrow, um, and I really wanted it get, to get done before that, there's nothing I can do. Other things that are more important need to be done, and that's okay, hummus can be made later. I can always make it right before we use it. It's fine, there's grace. So, get organized where you can. And don't just try to, one of the things I think we try to do, or at least I try to do, is again all or nothing we jump all in we want to organize everything our schedules our houses our cleaning schedules school schedules everything just start small start in one spot and then so let's say you feel like you're not on top of your housework the housework is you know out of control or you just feel like you don't really have a hold on it um it's more than you can bear whatever okay so that's the thing that you feel stressed out the most about currently let's focus on that let's create a cleaning schedule where you're able to focus on just a little bit and maybe it's like hey for this week we're just gonna work on deep cleaning the kitchen like if you have littles if you have new babies or toddlers um and you don't have big kids to help watch or your husband works you know all day there's no aid there or you don't have a friend that can come over and kind of help clean or help watch kids or whatever it is, get creative. Um, and you are in the thick of it. Then just pick your kitchen this week and do all the things that you can. 15, 20 minutes a day are going to chip away at, the, at what needs to be done and eventually it will get done. And that's good. And celebrate those things. Like... 
don't feel bad or don't get down on yourself because you didn't get everything done or you didn't get everything you wanted done, that's okay. Your heart and your attitude is much more important than your to-do list. And while yes, we need to be diligent and we need to do our duties and all of those things, but God is concerned with our heart and we need to make sure that we're doing it with gladness and joy and thankfulness um, and not out of contempt or grumbling or you know frustration. And so just start small, pick one space. Maybe it's just, okay, my time, like my day is getting away from me. I'm not able to get a lot of the things that I need to get done, done. Okay, so let's organize your day. Create a schedule or a routine. We kind of, I call it a rhythm or a routine. It's not at a certain time. It's just, these are the things that need to get done. And then maybe you're not able to do your skincare in the morning like you want to because you just run out of time. And one of my, if you haven't seen my video on the highly effective, five highly effective um, habits of a homemaker, you should definitely check that out because that will give you some tips and pointers and how to make your day, how to just be more effective in your day. But that aside, um, I'll link it down in the description just in case you haven't seen it. But that aside, just kind of create some routine in your day that offers you that. And then just put in there the things that you need to get done, get to what you can. And sometimes it's like, hey, I'm just going to spend 15 minutes working on this area or organizing this area or you know sometimes your bookshelves get out of order and you've been wanting to get to it and it's just chaos and you don't like looking at it just five ten minutes a little bit every day until it's done and then there you go it's done so um that was number four get organized then we're going to move down to five number five is meditate on scripture my top three favorite verses to meditate on or just repeat to myself and pray about is James 119 be slow to speak be slow to anger and be quick to listen and I don't know where I picked it up but somewhere along my journey somebody told me God gave us two ears and one mouth so we should do twice as much listening as we do speaking so with that being said one of the things um, I have to really seek to take captive is my anger. I feel like um, <coughs> having unchecked anxieties or just being overwhelmed, easily frustrated or irritable will lead to anger. Next thing you know, you're saying things that you definitely shouldn't and are going to regret, you feel horrible about, you have mom guilt about, and so you just want to make sure that you're being slow to speak and slow to anger, quick to listen. So James 119 is one of those verses that I constantly will meditate on and just remind myself, slow down, calm down, it's going to be okay. And then the other verse is 1 Corinthians 10 31. And this is something that I repeat to my children all the time, which when I repeat to my children, I'm repeating to me. And that is um, 1 Corinthians 10 31. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. So it doesn't matter if you're cleaning dishes, changing a booty, cleaning a toilet, whatever you're doing, do it all for the glory of God. And if you're doing it for the glory of God, then you better make sure that your heart is right. And that right there, that passage, causes me to stop so much in my tracks and just reminds myself who I'm doing this for, why I'm doing this, who I serve, who I am. And that really does alleviate a lot of my problems. Just reminding myself that it's not about me it's about something far greater so then the last verse is not a verse it's just scripture and i have to bring it up because it's too long for me to be able to recite but it's matthew 6 or matthew 6 verse 25 through 34 and it's about the lilies of the field 
if you know this then you know where I'm going with this we actually named our fifth daughter's middle name is Lily because of this passage and how it just speaks to me and it reminds me so it says therefore I tell you do not be anxious about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body what you will put in it or what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into its barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not more value than they and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to the span of our lives and why are you anxious about clothing consider the lilies of the field how they grow they neither toil nor spin Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And that right there just says it all. Being anxious, stressed out, worried, overwhelmed is not going to add a single second to your day, to your life. It's not going to add anything to you. It's literally robbing you of joy. It's taking time from you. It's not going to add an, a single thing to you. And if God clothes the lilies of the field and he cares for every need of the birds in the air and those are not as important and meaningful as you, how much more is God going to do for you? And those three verses right there, if they don't stop me in my tracks and just realign me, then it's, it's going to take a lot more. And that's where all the prayer comes in. And then... You know, I put this as number six for a reason. Because we should be going to God first and foremost before anything or anyone else. And these other options are after we have sought his help and his guidance and his word, right? The very last one, number six, call a friend. Call a friend, call a sister, call a mama, call a somebody and just talk to them and I don't mean call somebody who's gonna sit here and play the pity party with you or you know play into it or anything like that I mean somebody who's gonna sit there and understand and be able to bear the burden of what's going on in your life right now to be a listening ear somebody who's gonna love you and encourage you um but also spur you on and and push you you know point you towards Christ and push you out of that place and sometimes things are so heavy or they're so burdensome we need people to help bear that you know God gives us community he gives us fellowship with other people so that they can help us bear the weight of burdens sometimes um it might be something that you just these things you know they might help in the day-to-day -day, but it's not going to alleviate the actual problem that's causing the stress and so having somebody to lean on and to cry or pray with um to help speak scripture over you and remind you and just like give you that good just mm, to give you that good companionship that you might need in that moment i say you know my sister is such a saving grace in this um and she doesn't always point me to Christ or to scripture, but she's a really good listener. And I know that she feels it with me, um, but she also is confident in God in my life and that it'll all be okay. And she reminds me, you know, that no nothing lasts forever. My grandma used to say, no nothing lasts forever. No season is forever. Um, you're going to look back on this and realize, you know, God is good. He gets us out of things. Nothing lasts forever. We will have a new season and new problems because this world is broken and there are problems. And that's just a way of life. But it's going to be okay. It's not going to last forever. And if nothing else, you have good friends alongside you that can help lead you or remind you or point you to where you need to put your attention and that is God. So those are my 
Okay, so that wraps it up. Those are the six. Let me just go ahead and remind you what those six are. The first one is you're going to breathe and pray. The second one is music. My choice is worship music. Third one, move your body, go for a walk, exercise, release some endorphins. Number four is get organized. And this is my favorite one, but I made sure that it wasn't like the top one because in the moment it's really not going to help. Number five, meditate on scripture. Remind yourself of what is true and what is good. Um, and don't be taken captive by your stressful thoughts. And then number six, call a friend. Okay, there you have it. Those are my six ways that I use to reduce stress in my life as a homemaker and a mama. And I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up so that I know that this is the kind of content you guys are interested in watching and that I need to create. If you're not subscribed yet, I would love for you to do so and be a part of our little community here and go ahead and hit the bell so that you're notified when I release a new video. I hope today is a blessed one for you. And as always, happy homemaking, friends. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.